Well, uh, thanks for that. Uh, well, non-binary co uh, computing, um, what I'm going to be describing today is actually uh, balanced ternary. Uh, and what that uses is a uh, three states where you have essentially a positive voltage, a ground state, and a negative voltage. Um, to do the, the math. Uh, but what really got me into it initially is I started looking at uh, projects to do for the, the Hackaday Prize. And I started looking at uh, what people had done with uh, different logic patterns. And, well, for instance, the, the clean logic, which is more about uh, how the human brain works as opposed to how a computer thinks. So I started looking at that, and it really doesn't translate all that well to doing uh, uh, arithmetic or anything like that, but it does sort of work out. So after a little bit of uh, experimentation, um, I started looking into what has been done in the past. And this particular device was invented by Thomas Fowler uh, back in 1838. And it's a ternary computer that could calculate up to like 87,000 uh, using a, uh, a tri-state. It actually used a balanced ternary. And when you look at it, it had a carry mechanism. Uh, it calculated, uh, it, it could do a multiplication, division. He used it for doing uh, logarithms and uh, also calculating stuff for the, the church at the time. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, after exploring a little bit more, I came across uh, a s old uh, Soviet uh, computer called the Setun. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, there's no uh, schematics for it anymore, at least none that I could find. But it really opened up the door because uh, as far as like uh, ternary goes, um, it operated on uh, 18 ternary digits or uh, what's called a trit as opposed to a bit. and. If you look, it could actually calculate up uh, numerically to 387 million. Uh, something on a binary computer, well, you'd take about 29 bits to do it. Uh, so it was actually a lot more efficient as far as uh, the how many components it used. Uh, the estimate is roughly about 2.5 to 2.6 times more efficient for each individual part. And they did this uh, because vacuum tubes of the day were really hard to get to work stable. Uh, so they decided to just do it with uh, balanced ternaries. So you ended up with uh, a machine that would actually be able to calculate, but didn't have to constantly be replacing uh, as many tubes to do it. Unfortunately, it uh, got... Uh, got abandoned in favor of uh, binary machines uh, as soon as the transistor came out. Um, and then that particular machine was done back in 1958, I believe, and then there was a couple revisions of it after that. So what I was going to describe uh, today was how to convert uh, uh, from decimal to balanced ternary and then show you a few of the calculations on how things work before I go ahead and show you uh, some of the circuits uh, and what they do because this really helps to understand uh, how things function in the long run. But you're working on a, a basically a base three and you're working backwards. Instead of uh, left to right, it's uh, it, Basically, you have your least significant digit, just like you would have in binary or uh, a decimal system. But like three to the second is nine. And when you start doing uh, conversions, um, when you start uh, look at things, uh, for instance, uh, well, to make the number five, you have uh, you put a plus or a positive voltage where the uh, three to the second is, and the other two are negative. What that basically represents is it's nine minus three minus one, so you get five, and that's how a three-trit number system would work. Um, conversely, if you want to do negative numbers. Uh, if you notice, it's just kind of a, a reciprocal of what the original number was. So, uh, for instance, you could do negative 9 plus 3 plus 1. And it works the same way for all the numbers that are out there. And with three trits, it actually gives you a range of about 26 numbers. So that's uh, negative 13 to positive 13, so it's signed. 
um, basic logic table, in case anyone's interested. Uh, but that's how you do the uh, carries. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory once you get used to it, but if you have two negatives, it's a positive, and two positive, two positives, it becomes a negative. And everything else just pretty much favors uh, a non-zero state. And then on a carry bit, you only have to worry about the, uh, the ands. So a uh, negative and a negative, you get a negative, and a positive and a positive, you get a positive. But when you start doing uh, things like addition, um, well, here I'm doing a 5 plus 6, just to show. Uh, you start over at the far end, um, where it uh, has a negative over the 0, because that's 5. That represents 5, and that represents 6. And you end up with a negative, and then you have a, a carry bit uh, up there, which is the, the 0, because it's not an and and it carries down, so you get a negative and a negative, which is a positive, and that has a carry bit of a negative up top, and then you take the negative and the positive, and that becomes a zero, plus the positive is another positive, and if you were to add that up, it'd be nine plus three, which is 12, minus one, and you'd end up with your 11. And that's basically how uh, ternary arithmetic works. Uh, you can also do a few other things, like there's multiplication tables, division tables. I just kind of put these in here as a side note. So if you wanted to build a fully functioning AL uh, arithmetic unit, uh, it's actually pretty easy to do, um, just because it uses uh, far fewer parts. Um, when I first started getting into it, I started looking at uh, how to actually accomplish like an AND gate or an OR gate. I was thinking too much in the terms of uh, how you would do it in binary. And basically I ended up uh, constructing out of uh, uh, some BS250s and some 2N7000 uh, MOSFETs uh, a standard building block. And that would be uh, um, basically uh, you'd have uh, I'm trying to think how to picture this here. You have your uh, AND gate, or your NOR gate, which basically is your sum unit. And your AND, or in this case an AND, is what it comes out to, uh, becomes your carry. So, oh, the numbers on the side are when I was originally thinking this out. I was not working in a balanced ternary. I was trying to do it in a, an unbalanced, which, it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> um, let's see here. The inverter works pretty self-explanatory if you take a look at the uh, uh, two MOSFETs. Huh? Do you want a pointer? Uh, yeah, that would work. Yeah, uh, well, you have your two MOSFETs here. And basically, whatever you put in, uh, if you put in a one, you'll get or if you put in a positive, you'll get a negative voltage out. If you put in a negative voltage, you'll get a positive voltage. But if you put in a, uh, a ground state or a zero, it just stays zero. It doesn't actually do anything, which essentially satisfies the requirements for the AND table on the carry. And so I started uh, building the circuit up. Um, this is just a... Uh, I was doing a splitter. Um, instead of using uh, two resistors to split for a positive and negative rail, I just did a kind of a floating ground. Um, and I just put this in because it was part of the process. So, uh, But that used a 741 op amp, which is a pretty interesting circuit if you're needing split rails and you just have a 9-volt battery sitting there. Uh, if anybody has any questions on that, I don't mind. And then going through and just breadboarding stuff. So eventually, um, I went through and I decided to start building this stuff up. And uh, here was uh, one of the uh, experimentations beforehand. And I was just doing a voltage divider circuit uh, using MOSFETs. But here, if you notice, uh, I have a, let's see, that's a negative and a negative switched on. And then I'm running it through an inverter because it was a positive, and so I'm getting a negative out. So that's actually pr working properly. And that was just basically part of the, the design process. 
So then I started uh, going into more work to see if I could uh, design a functional arithmetic unit. And well, your basic half adder, if you're familiar with binary uh, adders or binary half adders, it actually it's, uh, should look pretty familiar to you. Um, basically, you have your, uh, your carry in and it sums it up and then you end up with your other carry out. So based on that building block, I went over to a ternary full adder. And after you start doing this, it just kind of, uh, you can basically use a circuit, uh, if you're familiar with a, uh, what a, a ripple, uh, kind of like a, a ripple, uh, God, words on the tip of my tongue now. Hmm? Ripple yeah, ripple carry. That's what I was looking for. Um, but basically, if you, uh, it, it uses a pretty standard circuit, so it's, it's very familiar if you're familiar with uh, binary uh, ALUs. So, let's see. Yep. That's pretty much all I have for slides. Um, probably running really short on time because it's uh, something that I wasn't sure to explain. But if anyone has questions. Uh, when you're at the prototyping stage, how long do you chips get when you're trying to invert zero? Uh, actually, didn't really get hot at all. Um, I was working with... Uh, very little current and pretty low voltage. I just made sure I stayed within the threshold of the chip. But I mean, based on the construction that it looks like the voltage the device is halfway on, so just running current. They are, but I was staying below what the, or staying with when, within what the chip could handle when I was doing it. Uh, Yeah, I, I actually started looking at the uh, doing a an unsigned uh, or an unbalanced uh, ternary system at, in the beginning, but I decided to go with the balance just because, as far as the voltages worked, it was a lot easier for me to mentally wrap my head around and work with. Um, the other one just got a little uh, on the confusing side as I was trying to build things up. Um, I started getting uh, odd results. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, also when you're working with a uh, a balanced ternary system, um, you you end up with a few oddities uh, as opposed to an un or an unbalanced system. Uh, for instance, when you're doing an increment on a uh, binary system, you're actually uh, you, you can only increment. However, on a balanced ternary system, that same circuit can also de increment. So it was basically getting two functions for the price of one, because you could uh, start counting backwards and start handling negatives and everything else. Um, and that's where you could kind of just kind of keep adding up. Um, I have started looking into, uh, was it a predictive carry, um, instead of doing the, the ripple carry. And that's basically where I left off wa with when I flew down from Alaska. <laughs> so. Uh, any other questions? Can you talk a little bit more about the increment and the increment in the same hardware? Is the increment and the increment in the same hardware? Is there a is there like an external pin that changes what you're no, doing? No, not at all. How does it know whether uh, oh, you're doing? Uh, by it being a positive or a negative voltage. Um, here, see when you're uh, doing the um, the math here. By basically, when you change a, a uh, for instance, the threes place to a negative, it actually will de-increment a one right there, as opposed to um, always incrementing. There's there's no real toggle to it. It just it, it's kind of inherent in the design. Um, Is there like a bundle? Set of trits, like, so like, is there like a trite? Uh, yeah, uh, it's 
Is it a trite? You know, I've never looked that up. No, no. Can you, well, you know how you know, that? That's really true. Like, is it what it would be nine or that? Uh, well, the originals, like the Satoon, was uh, using 18 trits. Oh, okay. And that's where I could count up to, uh, uh, yeah, 800 and... Yes. 837 uh, million. As opposed to, uh, you'd need 29 bits to do the same. Yeah. You know, I've not really done the math on that one. <laughs> uh, you run that by, I actually can't hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the the original, like uh, the Thomas Fowler machine, um, he used just a lookup table to after he got his answer. And is that what you're kind of referring to? Just kind of something that could take the number and. Yeah. Yeah, I actually considered doing that. Uh, I was looking at using the the PIC Micro originally to kind of work as the uh, the controller for it, um, and then I uh, basically ended up stopping because I was doing this for the the Hackaday Prize at the time. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't quite catch what you're saying. Zero point stability. Oh, okay. And so it's zero high impedance or ground. It's ground. It just stays ground. Yeah, it will. Sorry, I'm, I actually have a hard time hearing you for some reason. So my main question was whether or not the zero state representation, especially after, for example, the ordinary that you have, the array will drive to the zero state of the representation of the ordinary circuit. Yeah. I actually didn't notice that, at least not at the scale I was working at. Yeah. No, it was more at the time, it was more of a, let's see if I can do this thing, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was, it was basically a, a let's see, see what I can do as far as, uh, Building a, I, I was thinking about building a machine originally, and I started looking at like uh, the Z80 and the 6502, and then I was like, well, let's build something else. And so I started looking at other people's projects. And uh, no, they used they used uh, tubes, but they uh, it was a pure balanced ternary system. 
um, unfortunately, the record or the, the schematics for it are still uh, either lost or classified, so they haven't given them up yet. I have. Um, that's uh, that was the first thought I had. Uh, I got a Cyclone to FPGA, and that was the first thought I had was to to start looking into uh, actually implementing it that way. Have you have you looked at universal logic gates that are mandatory? You know they're. Uh, well, as far as looking at anything beyond the, the basic gates that I looked at, no, I got that working and then I kind of. Okay. Did you, did you have any thoughts? I mean, I know you work on the ALU, but you know, should you go further? Were there any thoughts that you had about the instruction set or instruction decode or assist or address? Well, I started looking at the the 4004 as a model, um, and started looking at that. Um, there actually is a uh, an instruction set uh, already built for uh, that I could use. Um, the Satoon stuff uh, was actually published, and there's an emulator online. It's at uh, the Moscow one of the Moscow University websites. They have an emulator for that particular machine. Unfortunately, it's in Russian, but. <laughs> Uh, anything else, or? Yeah. Uh, 